everyone, and welcome to FanCast. It's Margaret Wallace Duffy. And it's Megan Burmester. And we are super excited to be back with you for another amazing episode of the Preventative Health Awareness Movement Podcast. So it is with absolute pleasure and excitement, really, that uh, we get to welcome somebody inside the studio today, which we don't get to do as often as we'd like, Megan. No, this is, this is I, I, I really appreciate having having this organic contact. Yes, and the energy that you feel when somebody's actually in the room is really Mm -hmm. great. But the other reason I'm really excited about this because this person um, not only is somebody who I have massive respect for as a healthcare professional, she's become a dear friend, a fambassador like no other, and um, just a wealth of knowledge and a beacon of light in this world because she truly does give a lot of her knowledge and her expertise to help improve the health and well-being of everyone. And that's why she has agreed to come today. So without further ado, I am really excited to welcome Dr. Carolyn Teske into our studios. And we're going to read her bio before we hop into this organic conversation. So put on your seatbelt because you're going to learn a lot today. Um, and you're really going to want to um, listen up because we got a lot to share about the importance of eye health. Mm-hmm. Dr. Carolyn Teske is a behavioral optometrist and graduated from the University of Waterloo with both her Bachelor of Science and Doctor of Optometry. She completed an internship in Memphis, Tennessee, where she worked with several cataract, retina, and glaucoma specialists. She also received the OCI Award of Excellence in Practice Management. Dr. Teske worked at private practices in Waterloo before opening her own Georgetown Clinic in 1996. She's affiliated with the TLC Laser Eye Center and is thoroughly educated in laser eye surgery co-management. Dr. Teske has worked for the National Board of Examiners and proctored intern examinations at the University of Waterloo. She has helped pilot ICI Learn, a program with the Ontario Association of Optometrists to encourage eye testing of young children to enhance further learning. And it doesn't stop there. This woman is a force to be reckoned with. I can't wait to actually hear the definition of what a behavioral optometrist is. So, uh, Dr. Teske takes a holistic approach to health, starting with the eyes, as the eyes are a window to your health. She believes patients should be the CEO of their health and surrounded and supported by a team of healthcare professionals. She passionately educates patients to be proactive, not reactive, to disease and works with like-minded professionals to serve integrative care. She does this beyond the clinic doors through documentary videos, podcasts, and community wellness events, and her expertise has been called upon for appearances on broadcast TV such as Kojakov and Rogers. She offers syntonic light therapy, which we're going to get into, I'm really excited about that too, services, and is a member of the behavioral optometrist groups. Dr. Teske lives in Georgetown and is a committed and active community member. She loves what she does which is very evident every time I've met her. She's just oozing that. Uh, She loves what she does, enhancing lives, and considers it a privilege to provide care to her patients. So Welcome, welcome. Dr. Teske, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here, surrounded by like-minded professionals um, to hopefully enhance everybody's lives. Well, I always say that, you know, you are my optometrist, which I'm so proud to say that, because I've learned so much from you as a patient, sitting in your in your chair and that led to our professional collaboration because I couldn't help myself when when you were you know teaching me beyond um, the eyes in your chair I I thought we've got to do work together tell everybody what your real philosophy of care is all about the whole idea that your eyes are a window to your overall health because the average person I don't think really understands that 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 it goes beyond just our vision that is so true Margaret you know often people will end in end up in my chair because they can't see You know, I uh, find it a little bit ironic that both of you went to read the bio and put your glasses (laughs) on, (laughs) which is awesome because we need those tools. Um, But I think, you know, where we're missing is the education part that that's probably the least important thing that I do. Um, Obviously, I need to assess vision and measure glasses, but I also need to look inside and the inside of our body, as we know, is attached uh, everywhere. So the eyes really, truly can be a reflection of so many other healthy things and or illnesses and predict what can be happening in the future. I I find this so fascinating. I find this so fascinating Mm -hmm. because this is not anything, just like bone health, which we will also get into as well as part of this, but I find this so fascinating because the average person does not know how important 
the eyes are. I mean, you just think you go through life. Oh, when they start to fail, then you go and you get them checked and then you get glasses. But I had no idea that it was so hyper connected to everything else and that mm-hmm. you could n- learn so much just by looking at the eyes. I'm just, I'm so blown away. It, you're so right, Megan, because I do, once again, in that siloed approach that we've all been taught to live in and, and exist in in our healthcare system, you see the eye doctor for your eyes and you see, you know, you, you know yeah. the story. <coughs> but you used a word that started with P a, a, and predict, which is mm-hmm. uh, links to the other favorite word that we have, which is prevention. So when when you really do look through s- into someone's eyes, let's talk about what are some of the things that you actually might see. S- to Megan's point, people don't realize, like, what do you mean when you can see something else or predict something else? Things like what, Dr. Teske? Oh, the list is endless. Mm-hmm. Um, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, cholesterol, um, cancers, uh, breast, colon, lung, uh, prostate in men and melanoma, all those cancers can r- be uh, manifest in the eyes. Now, if I don't see it, it doesn't mean that you don't have it, um, but it's certainly a good indicator that maybe there's no concerns at the present time. So so really what you want from us is a nice pat in the back to say everything looks good, mm-hmm. or if there is something that we do notice, uh, a call to action so right. that we can control what we can control um, and investigate further if it's needed. So um, obviously we check for eye disease, cataracts, mm-hmm. macular degeneration, glaucoma, and then do what we can do to prevent those th- diseases from getting worse. Yes. Now, the, you know, the average uh, optometrist, and I think probably in your career, because almost 30 years, right, which is incredible, um, you've seen thousands of patients, but you've also seen a change in the way you approach, I'm sure even yourself, the way you approach care. You have always been a very holistic practitioner. What does that mean? Because... I've been to other eye doctors, and, I, and I'm not putting other eye doctors down, but what was glaringly different that I was attracted to, that it wasn't just about doing the eye test and maybe getting me a prescription or what have you, but it was actually about educating me beyond that with the role that lifestyle plays in and how that impacts um, our well-being, including mental health. Can you kind of speak to how, how it's changed for you as a professional over 30 years? Because I'm sure there's a lot of change. Absolutely, and, and change every day. You know, as we collaborate with more ambassadors and more professionals, then it is so exciting to keep learning from each other. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, but I think what has changed the most is, of course, we want to assess vision. Of course, we want to make sure the eyes are healthy. Um, but so many other symptoms often are attached to other problems in the body from musculoskeletal. You know, I mm-hmm. talk about osteosound and I talk about yeah. bone density when we're talking about right. um, overall health and wellness. Yes. So, so not only do I assess the visual system, but we talk about nutrition and we talk about UV protection and we talk about supplements and vitamin therapy. And, and I think it's really important if you're going to be a healthcare provider that you look at the big picture. Yes, yes. What has your experience been like? Because you are, I mean, I'm sure there are more. You've got colleagues that uh, that you've also helped to coach and lead by example. And we're seeing a change, you know, even from the global perspective of, of optometrists because I saw it firsthand working alongside of you. And for those of you at home, it's not typical that a massage therapist works in an optometrist's office. And I'm going to tell you why. It's the credit of this woman here thinking outside the box, mm-hmm. thinking that there is a better way to help her patients. I don't massage eyeballs, but we do have an impact on the nervous system. And you understood the connection and invited me into your clinic. What has the feedback been like from other healthcare prof- eye, eye professionals been um, in the early days of pioneering this kind of work? Oh, I think you've heard it before, Marg, but, uh, you know, um, we're talking about voodoo, right? Yeah. We're talking about um, there's no, you know, documented research to prove this. And mm-hmm. and honestly, as a, a healthcare provider, it is more work, right? Absolutely. It is more work to look at the big picture mm-hmm. than it is to just be siloed and just do eyes. Um, but the benefits that you reap um, and, and the loyalty and the patient retention, um, because you are looking at the whole picture and not just at their eyes. Absolutely. Um, That's the win for me, you know. So does does this take special training to be able to do, like, how would I now search out somebody who is, I mean, obviously you're irreplaceable, but how do I search out someone like you so that I can have that experience? We're still growing. Yeah. We're still growing, you know. I mean, like-minded people attract like-minded people. Mm -hmm. So I think certainly, and, and the, 
fam, um, uh, you know, uh, directory. website and mm-hmm. or directory will um, attach you to like-minded professionals. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it's still not, you know, that common. I, I think because of the healthcare system, the way it's been built, mm-hmm. we're still siloed. We've got to break those walls down. Yeah, and I yeah. love that you asked that, Megan, because mm-hmm. it's true and it's real. And uh, Megan always brings that real side to things like, well, but wait a minute, how do we, how do we actually execute this? Mm-hmm. What I love about why we're having these conversations and pioneering this work is because at the end of the day, if the average everyday person, the patient, the individual, knows through education like what we're doing here today, they're going to start asking the questions. They're going to start demanding different answers. They're going to start looking and searching out. And because of the work that you're doing and leading the way, there are more optometrists doing this. Your team has uh, embraced this. Other teams will, and this FAM movement will do that. But you're absolutely right, Megan. I think, though, what we do need to do is empower people to listen to these things and then to start, because how do we get people on board? When a patient says, and like I did to you many years ago as a patient, hey, Dr. Teske, have you heard about this? If they're open-minded, then you can connect people to Dr. Chesky. And I know you would have a conversation with another optometrist in a heartbeat. Absolutely. If they wanted to understand, right? But that's a great point that you raised. And and that's a great point that you raised as well. You never know when you share something. Even if you hear just a little snippet of this, um, share it with people. Hey, I heard this really interesting thing today. So then that enables them to, you know, yeah, go ask their own optometrists go ask friends or or somebody who's even experiencing eye issues or or other health issues that hey did you know that you could go to you know a holistic uh, optometrist and 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 check into things further I, I it's just like i said it's, it's mind-blowing to me because it's just something that i've never even thought about it before so well and i think uh, dr mm-hmm. teske you've been so good at this and and leading the way in um when we talk about fan ambassadors or mm-hmm. health professionals that want to join this movement and they come from their own areas of, of expertise and discipline and you said that learning from one another is really important. You have implemented things in your clinic and in your practice because you've learned from the holistic nutritionist or you've learned from the massage therapist. You've been willing to learn from others. How valuable has that been in terms of the currency of impact you're having on the outcome of your patients? Well, the outcomes are incredible. But I think not only do we need this and want this, but we have to have this. Yeah, We are in a crisis, yeah. right? I, I think if we want to live better and longer, um, then we need other tools and other options for patients to consider, right? So mm. and I think that's where we can work better together. Yes. So that we can offer patients options. There is no you know, rule book, no handbook that says you will get better if... Um, but don't we deserve to at least have options to try? Mm-hmm. And I think that's where we are all united in our philosophy of practice. Yeah. Now, just for those listening at home, um, just la- laying some foundational groundwork about eye health as well, because we're going to, in the next couple of segments, dive in deeper to some of the tools and some of the really cool things and research that you're doing. But tell everybody how, like, what is... Th- what is the average person, you know, you, the ICI Learn program, those are for children. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a lifelong thing. Our vision is so important. But we often, like Megan said, we just wait until we need glasses when, you know, when the hormones start to change and things <laughs> need to, you know, your arm's not long enough anymore and you have to get a, a pair of glasses. Can you explain to our viewers the importance of eye health as part of a preventative um, system? And, and I know you've had funding clawed back in a lot of ways which is really unfortunate why should people go see their eye doctor and when well you know we can start examining eyes at six months yeah um so you know we really don't need the patient to respond um and should be starting those eye exams early 80 percent of what students patients learn goes to their eyes first you know the eyes truly are an extension of the brain um so if we want learning and vision development to, to happen properly then we need to start young Um, and then probably after that certainly in the learning years every year um, afterwards every two um, again really not for vision but all for ocular health and preventative maintenance right just Mm -hmm. like you get your teeth cleaned right Um, you know if your teeth hurt then people go if you can't see then people go but we now know we want to do that long before your eyes are hurting or your teeth are hurting Mm -hmm. yes yes and then of course in aging you said that it's connected the vision's connected to the brain and people don't really understand that until they've had an incident they've fallen 
um, or you know they've had a visual disturbance um, there's often things you can see in advance to prevent things from worsening correct so as Absolutely. we age critically important as well for our senior population for sure I think uh, two-thirds of seniors will fall um, and I think it is two and a half times more likely to fall if you have a vision problem mm -hmm. right so it is critical that you know regular eye exams are part of your assessment so that we can prevent those falls because obviously we need osteosound to make sure that our bone density yeah, is right. good but we want to prevent that fall so that we don't have to worry about it but right. um, and and the vascular system is so well represented in the retina so we can look at the back of the eye and help assess you know high blood pressure heart um, but more importantly, even stroke, mm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, again, if your peripheral vision has been compromised, if your eyes aren't working together, your depth perception, you know, driving ability, even just managing to walk around your home, right. all of those things, mm -hmm. you know, light to dark contrast, you know, walking in and out of rooms, yeah. all of those things are very dependent on your eyes. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you know what, what I find interesting too is, uh, you know, I do think about obviously your visuals of your surroundings are, are you know, I, I don't think of that in terms of balance. I, when I think of balance, I always think about ears um, because a lot of people get vertigo and they get you know, fluid in their ears and they get dizzy and they're, they're going to fall. But I didn't really think so much that, of course, you need to see where you're going. But, but to think of just like little things like your peripheral vision and things like that. I know macular degeneration, or, you know, the black spots in your eyes, but I always think of ears for, for balance mm -hmm. and, and falls and fracture prevention. You right. don't think of the eyes. I don't know why. That's yeah. such a silly thing to say. But Well, and it's that's a great segue because mm -hmm. we're going to take a break here in a second and yep. we're going to come back and we're really going to dive into this thing that we're very passionate about, the mm -hmm. musculoskeletal system. And as Dr. Teske said, earlier on in our conversation that the eyes even tell a lot about our musculoskeletal system. And so we're going to uh, take a break here in a minute. We'll be back here at FAMCAST, so stay tuned. See you in a minute.